Go back to what? Yeah. Imagination. Like SpongeBob and Patrick. Okay. You don't watch SpongeBob like SquarePants? With the box that they were inside. <laughs> yeah. The Squidward is fine. He's driving the next car. What are they doing? It's just a box. Okay. First thing I do is designate that this is imaginary. And for 80, I'm going to break it down and see if there's anything I can pull out. <clears throat> 80 is 4 times 20, right? And 20 is 4 times 5? I could take the 4s and break them down again, but why? I have a pair of 4s. Okay. Yes, there's your answer. I is a whole number, or a whole whatever, okay? Everything we've learned so far, you don't have to write this down. Everything we've learned so far applies to imaginary numbers, okay? Remember the I, we treat it as a variable. So if we're going to be adding two terms together that have I's in them, we can only add them if they're alike. If we're going to be multiplying terms that have I's in them, we add the exponents of I. If we're going to be dividing terms, then we subtract the exponents of i. When you're adding or subtracting, it's the same thing as if this was 6 minus 4x minus 5 minus 4x. What would be the first thing you do? No, not FOIL. This is subtraction. I want to make sure I distribute this minus sign to everything in that second group because we're subtracting those terms. Okay, so it's 6 minus 4i minus 5 plus 4i. Then I find my terms that are alike and I combine them. Whole number 6 minus 5 gives me 1. And in my i terms, I have negative 4 plus 4, which is? Zero, which means that I have no more. So the answer is simply one. The I's went away. Okay? The only difference when we're working with I's is at the very end, if you've got, like, an exponent on it, you need to simplify it. When you're multiplying, you don't have to write this down, you treat I just like any other variable. Just when we get to the very end, if we can simplify it, we're going to simplify it. This is a FOIL problem. Who said something? Um, did you go back to a group? <clears throat> Done? This is a FOIL problem. 9 minus 2i times 2 plus 5i. When we do FOIL on this, our first terms multiply to give us 18. What's 9 times 5i? 45i. Your inner terms, what's negative 2i times positive 2? Negative 4i. And then your last terms is a negative 2i times <laughs> positive 5i, which is negative 10i squared. Now here, when I look at these two middle terms, they both are alike. They both have an i to the first power, so I'm going to put them together. And I can't do anything with the i. It has to stay there. But if you look at that last term, what does i squared represent? Negative. i squared is negative 1. 
So this is negative 10 times negative 1, which turns it into positive 10. And then you finish by putting your whole number constants together. 18 plus 10 is 28 plus 41i. What's that, Parker? So any i term that you have that has an exponent bigger than 1, you need to reduce it. You don't want a final answer to have an i squared in it, or an i cubed, or an i to the anything. i by itself, okay. Multiply it out, treating i as a variable, and then at the very end, figure out what you got there. Start with this. What's negative 3 times 6? Times negative 2. Positive 36. What's i times i times i? i cubed. Okay, this cannot be our final answer. i cubed is an odd number, so we will have an i left, right? I'm going to write it as such. I will have an i left. i squared is positive or negative 1? No, nope. negative 1. So this is 36 times negative 1 times i. You don't have to write all that down as your steps. I'm just trying to let you see. So your final answer is negative 36i. What's that part? i squared equals negative 1. Okay? And 2 goes into 2, and odd goes into 2 once. Odd. Negative. Dividing imaginary numbers, you don't have to write this down, follows the same rules as radicals. Okay? Just like you can't have a radical in the denominator of a fraction, you also can't have an imaginary, a little i in the denominator. Now, we know that if i has an even power, then all the i's go away. Right? So, if it was already even in the denominator, I wouldn't have to worry about it. I'd just make it go away. But since it's not, I need to multiply by one more i. But anything I do to the denominator, I must also do to the numerator. All right, well, in the top we have, what do you call that? Distribution. Distribution. Okay, it's on the back side, but that's still what we got to do. 1 times i is i. How do you think we would write 3x times i? 3xi. Okay. Now in the denominator, I have 5i squared. But i squared is negative 1. Okay, now we need to learn this. You should not write a fraction with a denominator being negative. Your denominator should always be positive. Okay? Because when you're adding fractions or subtracting, you're not actually adding the denominators. You're putting together the numerators. So we want to know what signs go together. Any time, because this is the same thing as i over negative 5 plus 3xi over negative 5, both of those fractions are negative, right? If I want to change the sign of the denominator, then I can simply change all the signs, and it will still be the same thing. So if this was neg uh, positive, it becomes negative. If this was positive, it becomes negative. And since 5 was negative, it becomes positive. 
And this 